Okay, so welcome back. So I've just said that if uh, if we've got any hope of this sequence, S1, S2, S3 um, onwards, uh, which is we've said is a Cauchy sequence of, ter of sequences in L infinity, uh, then if we've got any hope of this converging in the uh, metric space L infinity with the metric D infinity, then this sequence better well converge uh, point-wise, basically. So what we need to do is show that each of these sequences, which we construct by taking the if term, if you like, by taking the same term from all the, um, from our sequence of sequences, basically, we must show that all of those converge basically to some real number. So that's uh, that's how we've reduced this problem down temporarily to um, taking uh, limits of real numbers or complex numbers, which we know how to do now. Okay, so the way we're going to show that uh, this um, this must converge pointwise is by showing that each of these. Um, term, these sequences of the same term from all the uh, original sequences uh, is going to converge. And the way we're going to do that is show that they are Cauchy sequences. And we know, of course, that Cauchy sequences in the real line or the complex plane uh, converge to a limit. Okay, so, uh, right, let's get another piece of paper. So, if we're given a term-wise sequence like this, so we know that Li is going to be defined to be the limit of this sequence where you take the ith term from each of the uh, sequences. Okay, um, but we haven't proven that this limit exists, so how are we going to prove this limit exists? We're going to prove that this is a Cauchy sequence. Uh, so, how do we prove this is a Cauchy sequence? Well, we need to show that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some natural number, big N, which is an element of the natural numbers such that if little n and little m are greater than or equal to big N, it implies that now we're doing distance functions in um, in uh, the real or complex numbers. So the distance between x, what should we say, n i minus x m i is less than epsilon, basically. So I need to be able to find you some point, some term, x big N i, such that if I go, if I pick any two terms, x little n i and x little m i, which are beyond that big N, uh, x big N i term, or, or you could actually pick the term x big N i, they could be equal to that big N, then if I take the distance between them, which is this modulus of one term minus the other, uh, then that needs to be less than epsilon. But that looks very similar to something we've got up here, basically. Um, so, right, so let's let epsilon be arbitrary. Let epsilon uh, be greater than zero. So we want to prove this now. So we say, let's take an arbitrary epsilon and let's prove that I can find you such a big N. Well, basically, now we use the fact that this sequence of sequences was Cauchy because this sequence of sequences being Cauchy meant that I could find you a sequence S big N such that uh, if you took any two sequences S little N and S little M that were beyond there, then... Um, the distance apart in the infinity norm, it's infinity metric, I do apologise for that, the infinity metric, um, the distance between those two sequences was going to be uh, less than epsilon, but the distance was equal to the supremum of the distances between each term, which is very hopeful because uh, this is exactly what we've got down here. This is, this is the distance between those two terms, and this the, the, this was the supremum over every possible every possible term you could take between those. So basically, we ha we f saw that this implied that if you had took any i, which was a natural number, and you took any n and m, which were greater than or equal to big N, this was true, that the diff the modulus of x n i minus x m i, so the i -th term of the nth sequence and the i -th term of the nth sequence, the distance between them, the complex modulus of the difference of them, uh, is going to be less than epsilon. But that's exactly what we wanted. So my claim is just use the uh, big N from uh, from the Cauchy criterion here. Uh, so use this big N, basically. If you go beyond that big N, so we're now just looking at a term-wise sequence. So let's um, let's say here we've got our i -th, th term, so our n, uh, x, n, i, x, uh, little n, i, x, little m, i. So we've got our i -th term here. So we're looking at the i -th, uh, the sequence of i -th terms, which is what, uh, we've, what we've got here. And basically, what we wanted to find was a point beyond which, if we picked any two 
terms of the sequence, uh, then uh, the distance between them was going to be less than epsilon. I claim I've done that because... Um, if we now just, uh, if we use the big N from this Cauchy criterion of the whole sequences, then if we go beyond that big N uh, for the Cauchy sequences criterion for the in the L infinity space, uh, then uh, I guarantee you that the modulus of any two terms in this in this rectangle here has to be less than epsilon because in fact it's true if you take them in whatever this in this entire rectangle um, because if they weren't if it w if it were not the case that the distance between any two of these terms was less than epsilon then it would contradict the supremum of these being less than epsilon because you'd have something that was greater than epsilon uh, or greater than or equal to epsilon and therefore the supremum would be bumped up basically. So, from this here, we get the fact that these are Cauchy sequences. So we just use the big N from the Cauchy criterion on L infinity. Cauchy criterion on L infinity. So basically, what I've just shown you is that all these term-wise sequences, so if we... if if the sequence of sequences is, is Cauchy with respect to the d-infinity norm, then what I've shown you is that all these sequences, all these term-wise sequences of real or complex numbers, they are also Cauchy sequences with regards to the metric space on the real or complex numbers, depending on whether, we, uh, whether these are real or complex numbers, basically. Uh, so uh, these are Cauchy sequences in either the real number line or the complex plane. So they therefore have limits. This implies that all the term-wise term sequences, all these term term sequences, all uh, term sequences have limits. Have limits in the real line or complex plane have limits. So, we do indeed have that if these sequences are Cauchy with respect to the d-infinity uh, metric, uh, then um, then these sequences converge uh, to pointwise, basically. So we have some pointwise limit at the moment. So we have this. We now have this sequence. Let's say L, which is equal to L1, L2, L3, etc., which is uh, a sequence of all the termwise limits of these uh, termwise sequences, basically. So Li is the limit of the sequence where you let. Um, n vary over every possible sequence, but you always pick the ith term. So the ith term is kept constant, but you take the limit as the sequence you take it from converges on infinity. So that exactly is just, uh, you take the limit of this, you're letting this uh, superscript get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, right, uh, so let me, get, let me get rid of that. Right, okay, so what we now need to prove is that um, that this is stronger than than uh, just pointwise convergence. At the moment, what we've got is that this sequence S1, S2, S3, etc., is converging pointwise to L, to this sequence L, okay? Uh, what we don't know is that it converges with regards to the d-infinity metric. So what do we need to prove in order to show that it converges with regards to the d-infinity metric? So let me just draw out my sequences again. So S1 is equal to this sequence x11, x12, x13, etc. Uh, S2 is equal to this sequence x21, x22, x23, etc. And we'll just that'll be enough for now. And then we've got this sequence down here. They are converging onto this sequence L in pointwise, as far as pointwise is concerned. They're converging onto L1, L2, L3, L4, etc. So uh, what that means is that if you look at all of these individual sequences, they are converging. This sequence here converges to L1. This sequence here of second terms converges to L2. This sequence of third terms converges to L3. What I'm going to prove to you now is that this, along with the fact that the original sequence of sequences was Cauchy, is going to give us that this sequence actually converges to this with regards to the d-infinity metric. So what does it mean to converge uh, in with regards to the d-infinity metric? It means that for all epsilon greater than zero, there should exist uh, an big M, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it should imply that d infinity or the distance between S n and L and the sequence L. So we've got some sequence S big N and then some sequence S little n, which is 
greater than or equal to big, uh, s big m, well, it, sorry, it's beyond s uh, big m, uh, we want that the distance between that s uh, little m and l should be less than uh, epsilon. And now, uh, if we just think of s little n as being the sequence x m1, x little n2, x little m3, etc., uh, we can just fill in what this distance is. This is the supremum over i as an element of the natural numbers of the uh, modulus of x n i minus its corresponding term in the L sequence. So basically you just uh, take uh, the first term here and subtract off the first term here, take its modulus, put that into the set, do it for every single term, so the second term, the third term, etc. Put them all into a set and take the supremum over all i is an element of the natural numbers. That's your distance. Okay, so I need to prove that there exists some big N uh, for which this is true. So if I go beyond that big N, then this is true, that it's true that all of these sequences are epsilon close with this definition, i.e. all of these terms are within epsilon of their corresponding uh, term in the limiting sequence. Okay.